ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, this is about uh, dynamic snowmet coding, but I'd like to sort of give you a little bit of an outline about what we are talking today. First of all, I give you a little bit of a background with cellular pathology and try to outline what is the problem, why we need this solution at all. And then uh, Ferenc will give you a little bit of a context of where we were and what we were doing before when we get here and gives a recipe, which will give you probably some insight how we can solve some of these problems. Then I try to summarize the, the principles which we have seen during this implementation process. And that's this tricky bit when everybody's holding their breath, whether the demo will work, we'll try that one. I have to go on, on to the uh, seminar on the other one as well. And I will probably summarize it, uh, where it fits and what is the reporting workflow proposal for this new technology, which uh, involves this dynamic SNOMED CD coding. And obviously we have got some future plans as well. Some of it will be revealed later today. Uh, first of all, what is the background? I am a practicing histopathologist in a university hospital, which is about a thousand, between a thousand and twelve hundred, depending on the COVID situation type bed hospital. We've got about 70,000 cases of surgical pathology, 10,000 cytology and 400,000 uh, gynae uh, cytology. We are one of the three centers in the UK to deal with gynecology specimens. And we only had traditional style reporting using microscope and uh, laboratory information management system till the end of 2019, COVID came and everything changed. And now we are doing slightly different uh, things. What are the problems? First of all, retrieval of the cases is always a problem. If you want to do any audit, God forbid, research, you won't be able to do it. The systems are not supporting it. We don't have free text search and we don't have proper coding. Also, if we want to do coding, it is only possible in this old school SNOMED code version 3 and 3.5. We have got about 13,000 uh, entities in this list. We use it, but it's nowhere near where we want to be. Obviously, the cancer registry and the COSD work in the UK, which requires you to share cancer data, would like to have all of this data in a more meaningful format. We don't have anything on this. Most of it is happening almost in a paper format. With one helper, you can tag the case that if you want to make it cancer registry, you put a, a tag on it, and it will be pulled from the system. OK, jump forward 2020, and we have got digital pathology. And in my sort of uh, uh, excitement or digital pathology, I put everything on the big monitors, whatever I could put my hands on. And that's how it looked like in 2020. And I just realized that digital pathology is good. Digital pathology is really neat, provides some solution, but essentially what it doesn't do, it doesn't solve my problem whatsoever. And I started to think about what else can I do? And I try to make a little bit of optimization of my workflow. That's the thing which I can do on my own. I don't need any financial resources just to look around what it is. And this is the end result. This is how my sort of room looks on a good day when I don't have too much paperwork uh, lying around. Just to give you some idea about what are the individual elements are doing in this multi-monitor, multi-computer, multi-mouse, multi-pedal environment. First of all, the digital pathology is happening on this particular screen, which is a 4K 32 inch screen, plenty enough for digital. I could talk uh, hours on the uh, advantages of a four, uh, eight or 16K screen, but we'll leave it for a different occasion. This is the limbs, which is running on a portrait type monitor, which is very good because I don't have to have all of my glasses all the time. I can make it as big as I wish. And also it provides me context switching without actually windows task switching. I have got another monitor, which is essentially handling all of the additional laboratory work requests. That's where I request levels, specials, and so on. And I've got one more monitor for the clinical decision support, uh, essentially clinical data, radiology images, as well as if I need to, I can check my uh, email on that one. What else do I have in these things? There is the voice recognition microphone behind the web camera, which is used for the meetings. Also, we have got a separate lab tracking system, separate computer, separate screen. It's a cerebral uh, uh, system, which is kind of working, but not to its full potential. I have got a six degree of freedom mouse, and that's a very cool one because it's uh, reducing your repetitive strain injury for the digital pathology. And essentially a one millimeter movement on the mouse 
takes you all over your digital screen. I don't like to have one mouse. Uh, I like to have two of them. This is a two uh, double uh, scroll wheel mouse, which is used for zooming and also rotating the skin uh, uh, specimens. I like to like to see the skin epidermis up. If you can imagine, I'm at home in this. And then it comes the Roda Scott moment. You know, these are the pedals I play over the time, which is starting up the various bits and pieces of my uh, technology. And it's really good because I don't have to hit the keyboard, which is beautifully uh, uh, sitting in the middle, but everything works apart from it. There are some additional ingredients. I still have a microscope just to uh, uh, let you know, I can do normal pathology as well, not just digital. And the most important ingredients is right there. That's the coffee many times refilled during the day. Anyway, if you haven't got enough, it looks like a cockpit. And there is no incident why we call these things digital pathology cockpits, because it's as much as complicated like this Boeing 737-NG. But something still is missing. And I like to ask Ferenc now to talk about the context from where we started and how we got here. So hello everyone, my name is Fred Sigali. I'm the kind of tag along with my father, uh, always being brought around, uh, you know, I've been uh, dragged through to pathology conferences and everything since uh, for very many years now. Um, how it usually works between us, for those that have never met us, is my father will come up with some sort of crazy idea and I say, okay. Um, so what happened in 2017, just to give you a little bit of context, is he said, can we do VR pathology? And I said, sure. And he presented this at the ISDP and they had 3D VR pathology back then. <laughs> then he said, can you make some 3D pathology, which we could present with holograms, which we presented to Sirdan. And we had, you know, coded, uh, built 3D holograms where you could blow up pathology like six meters tall, you could look at a slide, you could walk around it, you could touch it, you could feel it. And my dad has a very fetching headset on. Um, just to give you a bit more context, he said, can we make the world's first holographic patient who had a skin lesion, very nasty, which we tried to cure? Yes, yes, we can. Uh, we blew it up to the size of a room. You could walk through it, you could touch it, you could learn, or you could use it for teaching. Uh, then at the end of that, he goes, can we make something that can measure specimens? And you can see on the right-hand side, we had something that could measure specimens on a cut-up table. Just to give you a bit of context, Basically, he says something, I make it happen, <laughs> or as best as I can, basically. Um, then 2019, the show kind of went on. We partnered with Microsoft at Karolinska. Uh, we did some of this further touchable pathology stuff, uh, and it kind of rolled on. Obviously, at the end of 2019, as we all know, we took a bit of an enforced break across the whole world for two years. So we skipped ahead a little bit, and this is where we get to SNOMED. So my father came to me, and he goes, oh. I've got an idea for SNOMED and he's been using, well, he used old school SNOMED since 86. So I've heard him talk about SNOMED for a very long time. I was born in 91 and trust me in the nineties, I heard plenty about digital pathology and SNOMED, uh, but this time he showed me CT and I'd never seen SNOMED CT before. Um, I knew a little bit about it, but I never really kind of had a good grasp on what it was. So he showed me a really fantastic paper where they derived the SNOMED CT model or tried to reverse engineer it. Now I took one look at this and I went, a little bit complicated for me. I don't have the medical knowledge that he does. This didn't really make sense for me. Luckily, he mentioned that Scott Campbell uh, and uh, other authors uh, in 2015 had made a graphical database. Being a programmer, I went, wonderful. This is going to be a great way to explore SNOMED. So as we went through it, I started looking at all the different kind of nodes. I started looking at all the different relationships between all the concepts. I looked at where nodes were ending up, where they weren't ending up, where there were irregularities, where there were things missing, things going left and right uh, and kind of all over the place. Uh, and, you know, just the regular kind of exploration that you, one kind of does when they first meet Snowman. And being a visual guy, I thought, what a wonderful way to approach this. OK, but what's the crazy thing he asked me to do this time? Well. Um, we kind of came together and he said, now you've had a look at SNOMED, I want you to start making a web app. Um, and he always calls me uh, basically his little chef as a little bit of an endearing term, but he says, I put ingredients together uh, in computer science. So what was the recipe that we had to come up with without kind of spoiling the demo in a second? Well, first we added a dash of natural language processing and about 50,000 uh, pathology reports with all patient data removed. Uh, we utilized deep learning, and don't worry, we'll get into um, what we actually use this for in a second. Uh, we utilized deep 
learning to basically create models uh, using vector creation and word embeddings so that we can uh, extract words that will be relevant to pathology because I don't know if many of you know, but there's not that many pathology specific AI models out there for text analysis. Then we threw in a little bit of a sprinkle of some pre-made models, the kind of ones out of the box using Sci Spacey, which I'll show you a little bit of a, a demo in a second. Um, and we cross reference that with the UMLS and with other reference markers just to make sure that it made sense basically. Then and obviously we had Scott and uh, Scott et al's, uh, Scott Campbell et al's graphical database, which we used uh, edge to edge detection nodes and other traversal algorithms on, uh, and a couple of little secret ingredients that I'll keep to myself, but I'll give you a few little hints about um, later. Now, for those that don't know natural uh, kind of language processing and don't know named entity recognition, this is a demo from Sci Spacey. We've put some pathology text in there, and you can see it's extracted and highlighted the entities. So this way, we know what entities are going to be in the report. We can cross-reference it with the UMLS, and then that way, we can have you know pathology entities extracted for different things for uh, organs. Um, you know, you can they don't have to be called entities. You can actually give them categories um, when you do named entity recognition. But what is it that we actually made with all this? Well, first thing my dad said is, can we start with a web app for reporting? And I said, sure. So we stuck some, uh, we stuck some case history, some uh, macroscopic description in. He then says, but can we link it up to all the SNOMED stuff? And I was starting to think about how can I link it up? Um, and, you know, we trained the model. We had a model that understood SNOMED and could make predictive analysis. Um, so basically, when you highlight something in the web app, my father wanted it to link. And I said, sure, we can do that. So it links to the skin nodule um, in this case, which you would have selected. You'll see this in a, in a demo in a short while. The next question he had was, pathologists are visual people too. Can you make it really colorful for me? And can you make it say what the code is? And I went, sure, <laughs> tooltips there, it's colorful. Um, each of the different SNOMED concepts come up as different colors in the pathology report, basically. Um, as the AI works through the report, it actually learns and builds its model and it learns from the context that it's in. So as it's going through, it's continuously adding things to its own term of reference and scoring it. Then he said, can you add some images for me so we can link the SNOMED codes directly to the images that I'm looking at? I said, sure, we made this. The next thing was he asked if we could have it linked to the term browsers. So you can see at the top and at the bottom, you don't have to read the text, but you can see that uh, basically these codes, when they're highlighted in the text, will take you to the term browsers so you can cross-reference them and they have the, the URL embedded into the SNOMED code as well. Now, before he asked me something else, because he always does, he always comes to me and goes, just one more thing. This time I went to him and I said, you know what? I've got a surprise for you. I made it export it in, in an easy to package way so that you can link it up to the images. And then later on, when you want to do it, you can just find the text and you can find the location on the images. Um, just for those who are not AI inclined and who didn't un who didn't really care for all the deep learning or anything like that, just as a little bit of a, uh, a kind of an explanation, um, I'm going to use a who wants to be a millionaire reference. So the AI has the ability to ask the audience. So basically, uh, it uses that massive terms of reference from the 50,000 pathology report to try and understand the context it's in. It has the ability to phone a friend um, a little bit. Uh, basically, it's got a number of named entity recognition models that help tell it what the entity is. Is this a cancer, for example? It has a 50-50, which is not really a 50-50. It's a highly probabilistic model, but it tries to understand and build its context as it's learning. So, for example, if you're reporting on a particular type of cancer and you suddenly you know, find or put something in that's irregular or a different code, it'll warn you and say, hey, this is not related to everything else. This is out of place. And at the end, of course, we have the pathology because someone has to answer the who wants to be a millionaire question and we can't let the AI take all the credit and we need the pathologist's input. Um, I'll now hand back over to my dad for the principles of the system before we do the demo. Thank you very much. Okay, principles. There are a couple of things which we would like to present with in terms of the technology. The output should be SNOMED city coded and also needs to be human readable. Yeah, no, I don't have any inclination to read the long codes. Once we look at this thing, obviously, sorry, just one step back, it needs to be context aware. It needs to be whether this is related to the macroscopic or microscopic description. Is it a diagnosis or a specimen? This makes it a, a, a artificial intelligence enabled as well. 
It needs to be useful for the diagnostics. And obviously, we are trying to drive the patient pathway with these things. It needs to be really relevant. And obviously, it needs to be epidemiology and uh, big data friendly. We'd like to turn it into metadata, which can be embedded into the digital image. And at the end, all of the ingredients which you are talking about, we need to have a knowledge graph of SNOMED CT, which used for searching the entities. We need to have a decent corpus of uh, report text to tell what is the relevant bit in pathology. We need to do uh, a little bit of pathology coding ourselves and let the system learn how the way how it, it thinks. And we need to get the digital images and the pathologist input put it all together, how it comes to you. The major paradigm is what we like, what Leonardo started to search with the veterinarian man, just perfection. We're not going to have it for a while, but this is the bit which everybody is doing at the moment. Take a histology report and essentially code it and finding the relevant SNOMED CT categories to get it all together, which is all nice and beautiful. But we think the most important elements should be selected from that lot. And also what we really would like to do to link them into the bits of the images which hold the uh, content for that particular code. And I believe this is the cool stuff because if we can do that, Later on, we will have some idea about what the AI can do for us. And now I'm trying to do the impossible. Hopefully, we then go on. This I'm just going to here. So, so far. I can see what you did. Oh, okay, okay, so fine. I need to do now the, I need to do the same trick, I believe, uh, is uh, go to webinar. And I need to share the screen. I hope. Am I sharing? That's the tricky bit. Yeah. We are getting there. Anyway, what you have seen there, we have got a little bit of digital pathology slide, which is literally a mock-up because we couldn't bring you the whole lot and obviously no patient data involved, which has got a tiny bit of case history and macroscopic already embedded. And I will try to use it. I hope it will work and doesn't create too much interference to dictate. That's my normal way of uh, doing the reporting. Skin shows a screen for repetitive lesion with glassy keratocytes, areas of parakeratosis, as well as occasional neutrophilic microcess. Okay, let's try to do that. And if I want to show you the relevant bits, let's just go there for those who aren't doing dermatopathology that much, let's try to find a beautiful area of, of uh, parakeratosis for you. That one will do. And let's try to do this sort of ongoing coding. Let's do what the computer says. And obviously, the parakeratosis as a morphological abnormality is already added to it. Okay, what do we do about Let's select the microabscess. Okay, let's find it first, because otherwise there is not that much point of us to go around it. Apologies about the speed of the images. This computer is not designed to do all of those things. And if I just do the microabscess business from here, okay. Did I actually click the button? Let's see. Something's, something's gone slightly amiss. Oh. Let's try different entity. Let me try a little bit quickly with the skin there. Yeah, skin not there. Finally, got that. Anyway, and what it does, if we look at this thing very, very quickly, which we were talking about, that it puts the relevant SNOMED codes behind everything, but also it does the other thing which you wanted to do. If I can get there. It will show us the relevant bit of the parakeratosis. And if I go back to this, which was meant to be the microabscess, but uh, linked to the skin nodule at the time, it stores all of the image characteristics as well. And let's just do the diagnostic bit as well. Skin, comma, left arm, colon, squamous cell carcinoma. And going with the very same logic, and if everything goes well, 
we will find the relevant bits. Yeah, and we can find, um, let's do the left hand as the closest entity and we will have it. Okay, and one more thing to show that very quickly that the exporting works well as well. If I just get there, yeah, yeah I, it's actually not sharing because the Microsoft Excel is not the window which I'm sharing, but I can show you on the other one. Okay, let's go back to the other. I believe I need to share my screen from here. This is the one. Okay, you can see it now. Yeah. Okay. Finishing the demo. That's the that's the backup which we don't need. Hopefully, reporting workflow will stand as follows. We'll have the digital slide with the report being dictated in this mock-up version as I showed it to you. Then we do the live dynamic code searching using AI. That is the demo version. How we do it in normal life that we will let the AI rip on the full text of the uh, report and it will highlight the necessary bits for me. And I am as a pathologist will select the relevant bits which I want to link to the image. And once it's all done, the whole metadata is going to be saved. Uh, obviously, the code selection in the image hyperlinking uh, is led by the pathologist, which is the bit, which is the teaching element of any AI. And that's already done and gives me also the pleasure of giving my clinical calling colleagues a hyperlink slides, which they can see what I'm talking about. If I say giant cell, they can see the giant cell with the hyperlink. If you want to extend this relatively little workflow, I think the following things need to be uh, added to this. This needs to be turned into a proper metadata and being able to add it to the image for various image processing systems. We have got lots in histopathology. Also, it will make it ready for directed AI. And that's the cool stuff, because if you have got image, that's one half of the story. But if you have got the pathology report and the uh, uh, hyperlinks for the images, SNOMED coded, I think you cannot go at this moment any closer to get a decent output. And in the process, we have seen quite a lot of the SNOMED CT codes, which were missing for routine pathology. And that's the thing which I'm trying to do uh, for the next time, to have a look at all of those things which are missing and make sure that they are properly coded and providing us with a headset, uh, a ref set. And thank you very much for your attention with this one. And one more thing that what we are going to do in Atlanta, I hope that you will be able to see it there with the data which we collected. Thank you. And ready for any of the questions if you have. Yep. And no, not quite that. I, I probably I have to classify this uh, uh, or clarify this thing a little bit because um, certain elements in SNOMED CT are there as findings, i.e. Uh, disorders. If you look at these things, you will find tons of disorder. That's old school type approach, I, I believe. And what we would like to have is that the different parts of the histology report need to have different meaning. And I didn't spend too much time on the demo uh, to highlight it, that when I'm talking about the microscopic abnormalities, these are morphological abnormalities on their own. Sometimes they are diagnosis as well, but sometimes you have to use the disorder for the diagnosis. The diagnosis is kind of a white elephant uh, in the room uh, for SNOMED CT because we can't call anything diagnosis on, uh, or unless we want to step onto the toes of ICD. But I believe in order to have a pathology report meaning for the clinicians, there needs to be three things uh, coded. One of them is the specimen, what we are sort of getting, because that, that gives you quite a lot of things about it. The second one is the anatomical location. Where did you get left, right, upper, lower, especially with breast, for example. And the third one is the abnormality, which you would like to sort of name. And the rest of it is bonus to add for the microscopy description. And we didn't even go to the territory of the uh, synoptic reporting where you can pre-allocate all of the necessary uh, uh, SNOMED CT codes for the entities on the value pairs. I think that's, that's the thing. But what do I mean by missing? There are certain entities which are 
present in SNOMED code, uh, SNOMED CT code only in a post-coordinated way. Like I, I pulled out the, the skin nodule, but there was a, an adjective with it, keratotic. And there is not, not an entity which says keratotic skin nodule. And if I look at my 50,000 specimens, uh, which I have reported, you would find a few thousand of those because that's quite frequent. And what we would be like uh, to look into is to come up with all of those things which make sense to have almost in a pre-coordinated way, uh, a very specific FSN to make sure that we can nail it with one term. Okay, that's, that's what I meant by it. So, thank you. Oh, one more question back. Yes. Yes, I think so because uh, it is maintainable, but but it but with a but with a big cover with this one because uh, I think uh, the pathologist uh, pathologists do not have an idea about the complexity of snowman CT. And it will be maintainable if the terminologists give the right pathology references uh, to us to think about and essentially have a rather simplified uh, way of thinking about SNOMED CT. Because if you have got the various elements, the relationship between the, the procedures, the specimens, and the diagnosis already in the head of the pathologist is not going to work. It needs to be as simple, as simple, or almost as simple as the T and the M code, which everybody can grasp. Thank you. Um, so are there any other parts of your textual representation that you feel are missing to, to represent stru structured data in, in, in SNOMED? And not everything is everything is in SNOMED CT, but in a, in a way which makes it uh, probably difficult to use for the everyday pathologist. And, and that's why I feel that the all of the vendors are quite reluctant to build the post-coordinated uh, sort of expression phases because it's it's a huge minefield. How you make sure that the right kind of uh, keratotic nodule will be uh, at the right place, and that's that's where we that's where we need to look into, and that's why we probably try to do a little bit more research on that side. Thank you. That was really good, Lazar. Thank you. Oh. Time for one more, and then we'll have to move on. Sorry, microphone. Thank you. Um, did you ask other pathologists uh, who are not, let's say, um, committed or using SNOMED CT? To use that, let's say, in daily practice, at the way that you showed it. No, not yet. Not yet. It's in a proof of concept stage. That's what we built together, and what we plan to do: we create a standalone application which could be put onto various different elements. Because in the in the UK, especially, we have got about thirty or different uh, uh, laboratory information management systems which we have to cater for, and not to mention which probably will be the likely route forward because they are less in number. Is the digital pathology companies because if we can integrate this type of uh, SNOMED CT uh, approach with the viewer itself, the data essentially goes to where it needs to be in, in the image. Thank you. Thank you very much, Varenk and Laszlo. Thank you.